good morning, the members of Faith Lutheran Church who walk you moon to the 8 o'clock broadcast of our worship service from the Faith Ministry Center Sanctuary. Today is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. Leading the liturgy this morning is Dennis Bowman, our deacon. Preaching this morning will be Reverend Aaron Rosno. We joined the service already in progress. Good to see you today. Welcome to the Lord's house. If you are online with us or over listening over the radio today, uh, in here in person, my name is Aaron Rosenau, one of the pastors here at Faith. It's my privilege to welcome you to worship today. We're uh, continuing a series in this summer, uh, all summer, called Rethink. We're talking about the lies that we believe and actually then listening to the truth instead of the lies, and we're continuing that today. It's also Communion Sunday, so we're celebrating the Lord's Supper, and we'll invite you a little bit later to come forward and receive the Lord's Supper um, as we join together in receiving the body and blood of Christ. We believe that we're very much sinners in need of God's grace, and He offers us that grace through the, the sacraments of the Lord's Supper, where He gives us the very body and blood of Christ and the bread and the wine. We call that real presence, and He gives that to us for the forgiveness of our sins. If that's your confession too, then we invite you to join us for communion. Uh, there are a couple of announcements I want to highlight in your bulletin from this week. Uh, there's a, a meal train that's been organized for Dolores Jacobson, one of our organists, uh, our organist who plays every Monday night, except for right now, because she's recovering from hip surgery. And um, so there's information in your bulletin about how you can sign up if you'd like to bring a meal to Dolores. And also there's information about the uh, fact that we're hiring here at Faith for a new discipleship director position. So um, information about that, if you or somebody that you know would be interested in that position, uh, you can get a job description from us in the office, um, find out a little bit more detail about that if you'd like. Um, and that's the announcements I have for today. I invite you to turn to your worship folder to our call to worship from Psalm 33, which we'll speak responsibly together. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the heart. Make music to him on ten string lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. Our opening hymn this morning is from Lutheran Service Books, number 797. Praise the Almighty. Praise the Almighty, my soul. Adore him. Yes, I will laud on him until death. With songs and anthems I come before him.
and the truth is not in us. When we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you as God. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ. And by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks Thanks be to God. saving faith in Jesus that can provide us shelter from every storm. Help us, O Lord, to remain steadfast in your love and faithfulness, always trusting in your strength and ever present help in time of trouble. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter. Consider what God has done, 
Who can straighten what he has made crooked? When times are good, be happy, but when times are bad, consider God has made the one as well as the other. Therefore, a man cannot discover anything about his future. In this meaningless life of mine, I have seen both of these, righteous, the righteous man perishing in the righteousness and a wicked man living long in his wickedness. Do not be over-righteous, neither be over-wise. Why destroy yourself? Do not be over-wicked and do not be a fool. Why die before your time? It is good to grasp the one and not let go of the other. The man who fears God will avoid all extremes. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. According to St. John, the 16th chapter. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will be turned to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief. But I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything I tell you the truth. My, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not received, not have, not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> but take heart. I have overcome the world. And when I was a kid, I would visit my grandparents, and one set of grandparents, when we, we would, after dinner, we would read from the Bible, and my grandfather would always read from the Psalms, and to make sure that we were listening, when he got to the end, we had to repeat the last phrase. So you can repeat this with me, the last phrase, but take heart, I've overcome the world. But take heart, I have overcome the world. <clears throat> yeah, speaking of grandparents, my other set of grandparents, when I was growing up, my brothers and I would spend a week with them every summer, which is really great because my grandparents were models of faith for us. Um, I learned the habits of praying and reading devotions, learn those habits from my grandparents. But visiting my grandparents was also like stepping back in time. This was well into the 1980s at the time, and my grandparents were, let's just say they were slow in adopting modern conveniences. <laughs> they still used a rotary phone. And I don't know, not exactly what you, not exactly sure what you call it, but you know those lawnmowers that are completely unpowered? They're just a, a couple of wheels with blades on them that go like this, you know. Uh, yeah, we, we pushed that lawnmower to mow their grass. My grandparents had no microwave, no cable TV, no air conditioning. And for the longest time, they resisted getting a washer and dryer. So they had this... As it was an ancient washing machine they had in their basement. It was basically a big tub. You filled it with a hose and had a very simple agitator in it. You had to keep pushing the laundry down with a stick. And then uh, a ringer on the side of that, you sent the wash through and, and then hung it up on the clothesline. 
I mean, that was, I think it was like maybe a step up from scrubbing it on the rocks in the stream, but <laughs> not a lot more than that. I tell you what, every single time I went to my grandparents' house, I gained a new appreciation for the modern gadgets that make life easier. I mean, let's face it, we have a lot of great things that, do you need anybody else like creature comforts? You know, like dishwashers and central air conditioning, microwaves, now Instapots, you know? Uh, garage door openers, you just push the button and garage door goes up, cruise control. And of course, the little mini computers that we have in our pockets that are everything, your phone, your watch, your alarm clock, your flashlight, your camera, your TV and entertainment, your checkbook, your heart monitor, your level, your compass, instant access to information from all over the world, right? All in your pocket in a little device. We have all these gadgets that make our life easier. And the moment we have them, we decide we can't live without them. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with making life easier. Finding ways to make life easy is not a problem in itself. The problem is that we can so easily shift our mindset to demanding that life always be easy. We're so used to ease and convenience that we can quickly get angry and resentful when life is not easy, when things are not complying with our wishes and expectations. Many social commentators today talk about the entitlement generation, those who've always been told that they're smart and always get participation ribbons and awards. But I don't think it's actually a generational thing. I don't think it's something new with the youngest generations. We are all prone to entitlement mentality, as if the world owes us something. Life should be easy. I should have more than what I have. I should get more recognition than I've gotten. And when we don't get the special treatment, when we don't get recognition, then we can so easily be triggered into anger and resentment. I mentioned at the beginning of worship that we're continuing the series, Rethink. We're talking about the lies that we believe, what we tell ourselves or what we hear from the world and, and actually listening to the truth and Today, today we're talking about the lie that life should be easy. And it's very close relative, life should be fair. Life should be easy, and life should be fair. Now, I grew up in a a home of three boys. Me and my twin brother, Scott, and my older brother, Marcus, Now, especially as I look back, I think that my parents did a really good job of making sure that everything was equal and fair. They divvied out the chores that were pretty equal. And I know that my mom kept close track of what gifts were bought for Christmas so that not only was the value the same for all of us, but the perceived value of those gifts was equal. My twin brother and I have uh, our birthday in early December, just three weeks before Christmas, and my mom made sure that we did not get shortchanged on birthday presents and Christmas gifts. So it was, it was always separate, and we always got, you know, all of our gifts in December, but they were, you know, pretty well equal. It was, it was fair. Oh, but I remember times when it did not seem fair. You know, can anybody relate? Like the time my my brother, my twin brother and I went to mom and dad to complain that our older brother, who's older by like three and a half years, he got certain privileges, got to stay up later or go out with his friends, and we didn't get to do those things. And and of course, we got to the line, well, you'll get those privileges when you get a little older too. He's older than you are. 
but it just did not seem fair at the time. We all have this sort of innate expectation, don't we? That life is always going to be fair. Life is going to be easy. But the truth is, life is neither fair nor easy. Not since Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden and brought sin and death and devastation into the world. And ever since, life has been toilsome, difficult, painful, and terribly unbalanced. Not easy and not fair. Now, Jesus was clear about this when he said in Matthew 6, each day has enough trouble of its own, right? Anyone say amen? amen. <laughs> John 16, Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. And that word trouble, by the way, in the original language, actually means tribulation. You have tribulation, which is extreme hardship, suffering, tension. Jesus was not being cynical when he said those things. He was just being a realist, honestly assessing the world this side of heaven. And this side of heaven, the world is broken, it's hard. It's terribly unfair. A young woman in the prime of life is killed by a drunk driver while the drunk driver walks away without a scratch. Drug dealers and pornography peddlers live in mansions and make millions while law-abiding citizens struggle to live paycheck to paycheck. Corrupt politicians suffer no consequences despite seemingly mountains of evidence that should have them jailed, while ordinary folks have to fight and fight and fight for any semblance of justice. It's just not fair. And that's what we cry out, right? It's not fair. And of course it's not. It's not fair at all. But that is the world that we are living in, broken by sin. King Solomon, nearly a thousand years before Jesus, understood life's unfairness. This is part of our reading today in Ecclesiastes 7. In this meaningless life of mine, I've seen both of these, a righteous man perishing in his righteousness and a wicked man living long in his wickedness. And we might cry out, my God, can't you stop it? Can't God stop all of this unfairness? Can't he do something? Can't God do something about the injustice, the unfairness, the hardship? Of course he can. Of course he can. And one day, God will. On that day when Christ returns and he restores everything the way that it was meant to be, that was destroyed in the Garden of Eden by sin, God is going to restore it all the way that it was meant to be in the beginning. And on that day when God will wipe away every tear from our eyes, as the book of Isaiah and the book of Revelation say it, God will end all injustice, all hardship, and all pain. God, come quickly, right? Jesus, come quickly. But God has already done something. He's already done something about all the brokenness of the world. I think that uh, without even realizing it, Solomon, to go back to Solomon in Ecclesiastes, he was actually on to something. This is not in our reading. It's a little bit later. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 Uh, Solomon says, there's something else meaningless that occurs on earth. The righteous who get what the wicked deserve and the wicked who get what the righteous deserve. Meaningless, Solomon says. A great injustice. That is meaningless unless... 
unless it's talking about what God has given to the righteous one. The righteous one who got what the wicked deserve. And all of us who got what the righteous one deserves. Oh yes, God is unfair. It's true. God is terribly unfair. And I mean that. Psalm 103 says this, God does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. Paul says this in 2 Corinthians 5, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him, who's Christ, we might become the righteousness of God. So Jesus, the righteous one from God, got what we deserved. Punishment, condemnation, death. We got what Jesus deserves. Life, love, glory, eternal favor with God. See how God is reversing it? Completely unfair that he would lay all of our burdens and all of our punishment and all of our sin, all of our wickedness on Jesus. And he would give to us life and salvation. That's God's solution to all the brokenness and injustice of the world to give us his son. So unfair, but obviously absolutely endlessly loving to give us his son, Jesus. And you look at the cross of Christ, and you can realize, yes, life is unfair. And even God is unfair. He has given us so much more than we deserve. Jesus said it, in this world you will have trouble, tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Your turn. Take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus said it, you can say it in Jesus. Amen? Amen. I invite you to stand with me as we join together in speaking the words of the creed. We'll speak the words of the Nicene Creed today, printed for you in your worship folder. Together, boldly, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered in the name of Jesus, let us now offer up our prayers to our Heavenly Father who always hears us and answers us according to his good and gracious will. Abba, Father, it is your will that all your children on earth would give, live together in peace and harmony. 
Defeat the plans of the wicked who seek to cause violence or conflict. Search our hearts and root out the evil that would lead us to all anger, bitterness, and discord in our lives. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let the glory of your name be the passion of the church and the loving, saving love of Christ be the measure in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abba, Father, you love all your children and desire repentant hearts and complete trust from us. Transform the hearts of those who have wandered from the Christian faith and believe in other gods. And for your children who, who do believe in Jesus, keep our Christian faith strong, especially when we are persecuted or face trials that make us doubt your faithfulness and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Abba, Father, you bless the earth and make it fruitful, bringing forth the abundance of whatever is in need to sustain our lives. Bless our farmers with good weather to grow their crops and inspire us to work together in distributing your bounty to the whole world, especially to those who are in great need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abba Father, you have called some people to serve as missionaries in faraway places. Bless them with safety and courage, especially where opposition to the gospel is fierce and their lives may be in danger. Grant them success in their calling and soften the hearts of those they serve so that the seeds of your word may take root and flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abba Father, you provide for our every need throughout every chapter of life and give us the hope of the life yet to come. Bless those whose lives are in transition as they move from the familiar to the unknown especially those who have experienced the recent loss of a loved one. By your spirit of comfort, grant them the peace that passes all our understanding and help them find joy in the hope of the resurrection. We pray especially for Jim Bubb and his family at the passing of his brother Bill. We pray for the family of Joan Miller and the family of Patricia Tate, who passed away this last week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abba Father, we give you thanks and praise for doctors, nurses, therapists, and all other healthcare workers who use their gifts to restore and maintain our physical and mental health. Through their talents, grant relief to all those who struggle with an illness, those who are undergoing testing for unknown health issues, and those who are scheduled for surgery or currently recovering from one. We especially pray for Cindy Schneider, Shirley Schrader, Bob Zulsdorf, Lou Maylander, and Mary Brandt's granddaughter Leah, who is having back surgery this week. Grant them patience, comfort, and healing according to your gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Abba, Father, we give you thanks for the many blessings which you pour into our lives. We thank you for the life that is given through water and the Spirit in, the, in baptism. We thank you for uh, the baptism of little Rhett Wegner that will take place in our later service today. We pray that you would give strength to Rhett and his parents, Sam and Lily, as they raise him in the knowledge of Christ. Continue to Grant your blessing to Rhett that he might be a strong witness for you in, throughout his life. We also thank you for this nation in which we live. We are blessed with many freedoms here. and We celebrate this week, our Independence Day, as we join together with family reunions and community celebrations we pray for safety, we pray for joy, we pray that you would extend this time of our freedom in this land, but always looking for the true independence we have in Christ, the freedom from sin and death which you have won for us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who will bring us to that world to come where there is no tyranny 
where there is no suffering and pain. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we bring our offerings to the Lord. Thank you for every way that you support the ministry here at Faith Lutheran, that we might share this gospel, good news of Jesus Christ with all of our families, with our community, and with the world. Now we sing together this song, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds, as we bring our offerings to the Lord. Our offering hymn this morning is titled, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds, found in Lutheran Service Book 524. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes our sorrows, heals our wounds, and drives away our fears. you understand <clears throat> blessed are you O God ruler of heaven and earth day by day you shower us with blessings as you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, <gasps> Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, 
even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from the eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn today is titled, Go My Children With My Blessing, found in Lutheran Service Book 922. Go my children with my blessing, never alone. Waking, sleeping, I am with you. You are my own. In my love's baptismal river, I have made you mine forever. We thank you for joining us for today's worship service from the Faith Ministry Center of Faith Lutheran Church. 
all the members of Faith Lutheran Church invite you to join us for any of our worship services. We would enjoy sharing the time with you. For ministry center locations, worship, and education times, please visit our website at www.faithfoxvalley.org or call the church office at 739-9191. Any communication regarding this broadcast can be directed to Stephen Moore, Director of Worship and Arts, Faith Lutheran Church, 601 East Glendale Avenue, Appleton, Wisconsin, 54911. Until we meet again, may the Lord bring you peace.